Okay, today is the day I will show you guys how to use Jacobian to show that we need the row square sign V when we go from rectangular to spherical. First, we need the conversion formulas. Let me remind you guys, x equals rho sine V times cosine theta, and then y equals rho sine V times sine theta. Notice this and that are the same, and in fact, they both represent the r in the polar coordinates. So we really just have x equals r times cosine theta, y equals r times sine theta. And then for z, we have rho, and then remember change the sine to cosine, and then we have v. So this is how we can remember these formulas, and make sure to check out my previous video to see how we derive these formulas. Now Jacobian, j, and then we have these three new variables in the spherical system. I'm just going to put them down in this water. So we have rho, and then v, and then theta. If you want to switch the order of v and theta, that is totally okay. And then let me just show you guys how to set up the matrix. First, we will look at the x equation, and then we'll take some derivatives. So the Jacobian is really just like the following. Remember the good old days when we do the integral of, let's say, square root of x squared plus 1? The first step is we say x is equal to, do a trick up, right? So we use tangent, and then call a new variable theta. And then you take the derivative of it, and the derivative tangent theta is secant squared theta, but don't forget the d theta. Notice we have this extra thing right here, right? So this is kind of like the Jacobian in the one variable situation. But now we have a lot of variables. So what do we do? Jacobian. But rho, phi, and theta, they are both variables. So how do we take the derivative of that? If you say product rule, no, don't be too serious. No, don't worry about that. Just, just no. Do partial derivatives. Ah, so first we look at the x equation and then take the partial derivative with respect to rho and then do the partial with respect to v, and then do the partial with respect to theta. Ah, okay. And then at the end, once we set this up, once we have done all the partial derivatives, we will find the determinant of this matrix. And that will be the Jacobian is just like this thing right here. And you will see that at the end, we better get something like this. Okay, then for the next row, we will just look at the y equation I know my race is my race is broken, but we look at the y equation and then just do the same thing. So we have partial y with respect to rho, and then with respect to phi, and then with respect to theta. Lastly, do it with z. So partial z, partial phi, and then partial z, and then partial theta. Now, earlier, if you put down theta right here and then phi right here. That's fine. You will just switch these two columns. At the end though, you will end up with a negative result. Remember, whenever you switch two columns, the determinant of the result will just be negative. That's all. But don't worry, because once you put it down with the differential thing, you will have to apply an absolute value. I will do that for you guys at the very end. Right now, we better focus on taking the partial derivatives. So, here we go. We look at the x equation, first do it with respect to rho. That will just give us 1. And these two are just like the constants in the rho world. So we will have 1 times this and that, which is sine phi, cosine theta. And then we repeat, but we do it with respect to phi. So that will give us cosine phi. So we will have this and that stay. So rho but then we have cosine phi and then cosine theta. Lastly, look at this and then do with respect to theta, that will give us negative sine theta. So we will have negative and then rho and then sine phi and then sine theta. Now let's do with the y equation. Do it with respect to rho, we get one. So we have one times sine phi and then sine theta. 
And look at this, do with respect to phi, we get cosine phi. So rho cosine phi and then sine theta. Lastly, do this, we get cosine theta and this and that stays. So rho sine phi cosine theta. Lastly, do it with respect to rho right here, which is just 1 times cosine phi. And then look at this, do it with respect to phi, we get negative sine phi. And then the rho stays. And finally, look at this, take the derivative with respect to theta, but there's no theta. So this right here is just like a constant. The derivative of this in the theta world is just zero. Thankfully, we have a zero, because when we do a three by three determinant, if we don't have zero, it's going to be insanely difficult. We have a zero, so we want to take advantage of that. We are going to do the cofactor expansion. You can do it about the last column or about the last row. I'm just going to do it with the last column, and this is how you do it. First, make sure you put down the signs. Positive, negative, positive. And then the signs just alternate for each entry. So positive, negative, and then positive, right? Because I'm doing it with the last column, so this is all I need. So what this does is that you will put down the first entry here, entry, not entry, I'm not talking about food. You put this down, positive times negative, and that will still give us negative, so we still have negative rho, and then sine phi, sine theta. And once you put this down over there, what you will do is, you delete the first row, and then also delete this column, and then you will have this right here, which is the 2 by 2 matrix. You put that down right here, and then you write down the rest. Sine phi, sine theta, and then this right here. Rho, cosine phi, sine theta, and then cosine phi, and then negative rho, sine phi. Okay, next we move to this, but this is the negative times that, so we have negative rho, sine phi, cosine theta, and then we are going to delete this column and then this row. We are going to put this, this, and this, this down in the 2 by 2 matrix. So we have this, which is sine phi, cosine theta, and then rho, cosine phi, cosine theta, and then this, which is cosine phi, and then finally that, negative rho, sine phi. Finally, 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 what we're actually done. Because not only I ran off space, but the last thing is, technically, I will have to put down plus whatever this is, and then do the deletion, and then you put that down, right? But zero times the determinant of that is just zero. So thanks to this zero, big time. And as you can see, we will actually be finding the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix. So yes, it's a lot of work. But it's okay, because we are doing this together, right? Here we go. First, we are going to put this down, so we have negative rho, sine phi, sine theta. And then we are going to compute the determinant of this. And to do so, we take this times that, which will give us negative rho. And then sine phi, sine phi, that will give us sine square phi. And then we multiply that by sine theta. And then we do the other direction. But when we do this times that, we subtract in the middle. We have rho right here. And then cosine phi, cosine phi, that's cosine square phi. And lastly, we have the sine theta. All right, and then continue. We write this down. We have minus rho and then sine phi, cosine theta. And then we are going to multiply by the determinant of this. So this times this, which is negative rho, and then sine squared, phi, and then cosine theta. And then we do the other direction, which is rho, and that's a minus in between. Rho, cosine 
cosine phi, cosine phi, so cosine square phi. And lastly, we have that cosine theta. Okay, notice we can factor things out and then things are actually pretty neat. For example, right here, if you look at this part, we can factor out what? We have the negative rho in common and also sine theta in common. So we can take that out, right? And to make this clear, I'm just going to first write this down as how it is. And then I'm going to put down the factoring right here, negative rho and then sine theta. And then the remaining thing is what? We just have sine square phi and then this right here is out already. So here we have sine square phi plus this right here, which is cosine square phi. Ah, doesn't this look so wonderful? Of course, because this is our girlfriend, it's just one. Even though right now they have phi, but it's still one, right? Good that, and then we are going to continue. For the next part, I will still write this down. We have negative rho sine phi cosine theta, but we can also factor stuff up. Here we have the negative rho, and then we have cosine theta, so let's take that out. So negative rho, cosine, theta. And what do we have left? Sine square phi. Again, we took out the negative right there. So this is a plus. And then cosine square phi. Another one. Yes. So this and that, they don't matter. So if you multiply this out, we get positive rho squared. And then sine phi and then sine square theta, yeah? And then I will multiply this and that, which is plus, and then rho squared, and then sine phi, and then cosine times cosine, aha, cosine square theta. Hmm, what do we do next? Erase the ball, of course. And now we see here we have rho square sine phi, likewise here. So of course we can factor that out, and let me put it down here rho squared sine phi and here we have what sine squared theta and then we add cosine squared theta ah this is so wonderful isn't it because this is another one so finally we have this so ladies and gentlemen our answer is rho squared sine phi yes but notice though, earlier if you set that the matrix slightly differently, you might have ended up with a negative result. But it's okay, because the goal for this right here is to change the differential from dx, dy, dz to the spherical differential, which is d rho, d theta, d phi. This right here is the usual word that we like. Of course, these are just multiplication, so it doesn't matter how you put down the water. This right here will go in here, but make sure you apply an absolute value to it. So this way, if you end up with a negative result earlier because of how you set out the matrix, once you put that in the absolute value, the negative goes away. But here we have rho squared sine phi. And let me indicate that this right here is absolute value. Earlier, the double bar was for the determinant of the matrix. Now, rho square is never negative, so the absolute value of that doesn't matter. And for sine phi, remember when we are in the spherical coordinates, we want the sine phi, we want the, we want the angle phi to be in between of 0 and pi. And on this interval, sine phi is never negative because if you look at the graph for sine, it's just always going to be like this, from zero to pi. So the absolute value of sine phi, we don't need to worry about the absolute value either. So finally, this right here gives us rho square sine phi, and then d rho d theta d phi. <sighs> Yay.